the next five minutes, they can join in. Steve, could I possibly persuade you to take minutes because I have to um, go back and make a transcript of the public presentation for Yu Yang. There's no way I can get them both done before two. Okay, I will. You're a good man. Do I see Judy's name here, Judy Rondo? Yes, we have some we have some interested parties in our meeting today. Hey, Judy. Hi, Bernie. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's been a while. It sure has. Charlene okay. will not make it. She's working at the cafe, and here comes Renee. Okay. So I will call to order this um, special meeting of MISRAC Friday, March 26th at 11 a.m. Um, the first item on the agenda under the MISRAC is the approval of the minutes of the February 12th, 2021 regular meeting. So moved. Was that Bernie? Yep. Okay, so Bernie um, moved. Do we have a second? Second. That was Joanne. Okay, Joanne seconded. Any further discussion on the minutes? Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, item number three, correspondence under MISRAC, none. Um, and, and just so you know, um, Judy and, and Dan, um, we'll, you'll be on the next agenda under bar, so you don't need to worry about talking under citizens' comments or anything. Okay, thank you. So, so under, under the MISRAC, number four, citizens' comments. Hearing none, number five, any committee business that's not related to the bar grant, this would be a good time to, to talk about it. Um, I guess this is probably more appropriate under bar than, uh, under MISRAC than bar. Um, since Tuesday of last week, I have been having almost daily conversations with a, a pair of brothers who are very, very, very interested in building. Um, like, I don't think they're looky lose. Like, I, I've, I have pulled quite a bit of information for them on a couple of different parcels in town over the last week and a half. Um, and I would be surprised if they don't try to move forward with something. Uh, on what property? Belding. What? Oh, on the Belding Mill site? Building. Yes, ma'am. Building. Yeah, All no, right. That's yeah, they, they are. Any clues as to what type of project or what? Well, um, they are uh, restaurant developers primarily. They own four restaurants up in Massachusetts. Um, and uh, they just bought two parcels that are supposed to close on the 9th of April, uh, which are for um, multifamily subdivision, but uh, don't think that the words mixed use haven't fallen out of my face every three seconds when I talk to them about building. So I, I think that they uh, have the potential to do quite a few things and I think they would be very open to discussing possibilities. Oh, here comes Norma. Um, but they are, uh, they, they are definitely serious worry, even if it doesn't move forward, so. Good. That's that's good news. Well, it's a definite sign that the economy is strong. Yeah. Well, they are um, they're friends of Jason Lavallee's, and he brought them down to look at those other two parcels. Why? So they were here. They were here last Tuesday, uh, talking to the current owner. Right. The next day, they drove back down here with their lawyers. The next day, they started calling me about every other, <laughs> pretty much every other parcel in town. Yeah. Uh, and then they said, oh, yeah, and we close on those two properties on the 9th of April. So, so they are fast movers. 
Good. Uh, Kira, the loss on Ross and Ave? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Ro Ross and Buckley Hill. Are the yeah, two. They, so they just wanted yeah. to define. What did you say, Joanne? I said I, they just got uh, put in uh, under deposit, and I was going to send you an email yesterday with that, but you already knew. Yes, ma'am. Did they say if they were going to rework the uh, plan for Ross and Ave or stay with what, um, I forget his name, originally laid Peter. out? I think they're going to do something similar. I don't know if it's going to be exactly the same. Peter, somebody? Vangel. Vangel, yeah, yeah. I mean, that one was already approved. Right. So it, even though it's expired, so the, the hurdles to reinstate that are fairly low, uh, but they might tweak that a bit. Yeah, that was that was pressing the wetlands uh, reg limits at the time. So, th so that will take a, uh, a good second look when, when they're ready. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much for that update, Tira. Does anybody have any other um, committee business that's not associated with the bar grant that they'd like to discuss? Okay, then we just have our general item member comments, number six. I'm not hearing any, so we will adjourn, officially adjourn the Mizrak portion of our meeting at 11.08. And we will call to order our bar grant meeting at 11.08. Um, the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the February 12, 2021 regular meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. <clears throat> is there a second? Joanne, we'll second. Okay, so Bernie moved, Joanne seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, I guess we'll have a vote. So all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Okay. Item three, correspondence. Um, we had kind of have some things that came in about the bar grant, but I think it's just more appropriate to discuss them when we get to those uh, topics on our agenda. Uh, item four, citizen comments. Um, if Judy and Dan, if you want to speak now, that, that, that would be appropriate, I guess. Hi, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and I, I want to thank you for inviting us to the meeting. Um, actually, uh, I had contacted Tira um, because I, I had had a conversation with Norma, <laughs> who had shared with me uh, that part of the sidewalk um, project was going to include addressing that drainage swale that comes down from the school complex behind those houses on Thatcher Road and then into the state storm drain system on Route 12. Um, and uh, so the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District had, um, after we completed the French River watershed plan, had submitted an application to DEEP to do some of the stormwater improvement practices that we recommended in the plan. And one of those practices was to try to address that drainage swale so that we could stop that, that overflow problem that it has when you know we have really, really big rains and it just comes down the hill so fast that it, it just goes right out into the road. It never goes into the catch basin. Um, so our proposal, so this was a, a, a proposal that we submitted to DEEP through the Clean Water Act for funding. And they did approve our proposal, but to this point in time, we have not proceeded to prepare a contract with them. Um, so we, when I spoke with Norma and learned that that was something that, that the town was going to address in the sidewalk project, we thought that it might be a really good opportunity for us to kind of partner together uh, to address that problem. Um, so we do have a, a little bit of funding in this grant to try to rework that 
that I, I, swale. I, I don't even know what you want to call it at this point. Um, and, uh, and, and try to manage the water that's coming down it so that it isn't overshooting the catch basin and, and flowing out into the road. Um, so basically what we were interested in was what the timeline is for the sidewalk project, because we would have to probably jump on um, our communications with DEEP pretty quickly to get them to prepare a contract for us. Uh, if, if this is something um, that the, the um, MISRAC wants to, as I said, partner with uh, the conservation district to work on. Judy, um, have, have you got anything on paper yet engineering wise? We do not. Uh, no. Janet, do, do we with the, um, with the sidewalk engineers? Um, yeah, actually, I think this is a great opportunity to do some um, positive coordination. Um, let, I, is your, I guess I don't exactly understand what you've been approved for. Is it, uh, an, are you approved for enough money to have something designed or actually design and construction or how, how, how does that work? Um, well, we were, what we were proposing to do um, and, and I, I guess I, I should probably back this up by saying that when we prepare these grants, we, we try to do construction estimates as best as we can, but we actually include the actual design work as being an activity that's covered under the grant. Um, you know, the conservation district doesn't have any engineers on staff and we're, you know, so we're not, we're not engineers and, and we're not really, you know, we, we can't produce a, a engineering design. So we try to incorporate funding into the, the grant project uh, to cover those costs. So, so to answer Bernie's question, no, we have, a, we have a vague idea of what we think would be appropriate and we've estimated the cost, but we don't have any plans prepared. And what was your thoughts on the solving the problem? Well, right now it's, it's really just a ditch. You know, at this point, the water shooting down the hill is, has just, scoured out that channel and deepened it and, and actually made it, you know, almost like a chute. So what we had proposed to do would be to clear out the brush um, and widen that swale and put in some sort of check dam structures to slow the flow of water. Um, so that, you know, as it's coming down, it's, it's not picking up the speed that it's picking up right now and, and it will go into uh, the catch basin rather than shooting out onto the road. Can that be done with riprap? You think? Could be like like riprap check dams or something. You know, this is uh, this is what we would need to to evaluate and and decide on when we you know get the contract and start doing the actual design work. Um, you know, I guess your initial question on the timing. What what we're hoping to do is put the project out to bid in the next couple of months and the, to have the construction start at the end of the summer, but realizing how late it is already, um, there's, it's a high likelihood that it would go into next year too, so. Okay, that, yeah, that's good because we actually were planning on, on contacting DEEP later in the summer uh, to start preparing that contract with the idea that we would begin the work next spring. So, so that seems to match up pretty well. Right. Well, and the, and the other thing is ours is a very long, long linear project, 7,400 feet. So if, 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 I mean, it could be possible to just skip a gap and do that at the end, if it had to be done that way, you know, the construction sequence um, to accommodate your project. What I, I met the, we're using um, Freeman companies as the consultant for the town and they designed the sidewalk. So I met their, two of their engineers on site at the, um, at the problem area. And I, I guess I'll just share with you some of the statements they, they made. I mean, they, they said that the, the downstream networks are completely full of sand. So they absolutely need to be at a minimum cleaned out because nothing, even if you, it gets to the grade of a catch basin, if it can't get into the pipe. I had then, noticed that, yeah. Then, you know, it's kind of like a no brainer. And, but the, right. stru the structures are not typical structures. 
Um, and it was outside the scope of the sidewalk contract that we had with them to design drainage improvements to Route 12. So, so what they proposed that we could do as part of the sidewalk project, which would help and I think would be consistent with your project, um, is, is parallel to the sidewalk. It's not gonna address the steep swale coming perpendicular to the sidewalk, but parallel to the sidewalk at the toe of the slope from that steep embankment to the school is also kind of haphazardly graded, full of trash and kind of overflow. <laughs> so we they proposed on the construction plans to like regrade that, put an under drain in it, and which leads to that catch basin and, and put some riprap in it. So that will, at least catch some of the, you know, you know, try to intercept some from going over the sidewalk. So I think that would right. be complementary to your project. Yeah. Where are we talking exactly? At the bottom of the sidewalk, straight up the hill, or one of the two driveways? I'm sorry, Bernie, could you say that again? I didn't catch it all. Where are we talking exactly with this? problem is it is it one of the two the up or down driveway or or is it at the uh, crosswalk no it's it's to the left of the blue house you know the blue house that's right on the corner oh thatcher road of thatcher yeah oh okay i was picturing yeah. the whole thing differently okay oh yeah right. yeah so the water comes down through a swale that's behind all those houses yeah um but it's it's very overgrown and it's become really really channelized so it's it's just um, you know, just increasing the velocity of the water as it comes down. Right. I was just having a uh, hard time picturing this happening where I thought it was. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, one other thing that I noticed this week is that uh, DOT has been out mar marking the catch basins and it looks like uh, they're going to be doing some, some sort of improvement projects. Uh, so I thought that it probably would be a good opportunity to try to speak with them, find out what they're doing and what their plans are. And if they have any plans for addressing that that issue there as well. Um, so it, it seems like all these things are kind of kind of owning in on this this spot all at once, which is probably a really great opportunity. Yeah. So um, the, um, the 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 marks around the grates were related to the uh, eventual repave of Route 12. Uh, Rich got in touch with Condot. Um, and they had indicated to him that they would consider postponing. I actually talked to the, the guy that Rich talked to this morning and he, he said the words, they will wait to do Route 12 from 200 to Rawson until next year. Oh, in the, okay. in the well, interest of all these pieces that. working yeah. together. You know, I mean, the opportunity is there. Um, if they're gonna repave anyway, they might not mind digging up and we might be able to convince them to to replace that culvert. Maybe it needs to be increased in size too. Exactly. Um, I was wondering, Janet, even maybe if it needs a double culvert, a, a double catch basin with a larger culvert. Um, and then they could also clean out the downstream end, which is right. really silted in and also filled with Phragmites. Yeah, that's all of that is possible. And also just that in that inlet structure is kind of crazy, you know, with the grates. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not a typical structure. The, a custom structure might be appropriate. Yeah. And if, if we could get them to replace all the plumbing on their end, and then we we managed just what was coming down the hill, we might be able to get that problem solved from, you know, a couple of different perspectives. Yeah, that would be great. Right. I mean, so I would how be would you want to, to approach DLT. that? Yeah, uh, is that what is that a correspondence to them detailing the yeah. three pieces yeah. that need I, to? I could contact them, and and unless somebody from your committee wanted to do it, and, and tell them, you know, we're we're planning this project, and it'd be really great if they could do something too. <laughs> so we'll see. You know, if they're pushing it back till next year, they may be able to squeeze a few extra pennies into it, and you know, to to do that sort of re repair or replacement. I think, I mean, I think Ken and Rich have been after them. Ken, you might be able to address that with that issue. Yeah, we have been after them because of the fact that the water isn't going under Route 12 and into the, you know, towards the river and the railroad. And their biggest uh, issue at the time is they didn't have a vac truck to come out and do it. They just, uh, we only got one truck for east of the river and it just kept going back and forth and it wasn't high on their priority list. But without 
you know, having a drainage system coming down Thatcher Road to collect the water or to the left of the building that comes from the top where the school is, that problem is always going to exist. And that needs to be solved before they pave the road and, you know, we put in the sidewalks. So, I mean, you know, hopefully it will get coordinated. With that, the uh, from uh, 200 to uh, junction of 131 and 12, that was already delayed once when they were putting in the water main. So, seems like the timing is right. And with what uh, Judy is proposing, sounds like uh, it's going to benefit us quite a bit. Yeah, and there, there's no town-owned land anywhere around there to put in a retention pond, right? To dig in, dig one in. Janet, is it possible to put something at the top of the hill? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there might be enough room there, but I, I'm I'm not sure how all the storm drainage works up there, and I know you do. So. Well, I I know that when they when they expanded the school, there's diff, there's different drainage structures up there and it kind of takes advantage of the large wetland system up there yeah. um, to act as a as a stormwater basin and so there's an outlet up there that potentially the size could be reduced or part of it could be blocked off as long as it wasn't going to back up too much water to make a flooding problem upstream so that's I think a pretty a potentially easy easy solution that would reduce or at least you know over time like the water would still come out but it would not be so fast mm -hmm. so that could yeah. definitely be looked at just throttling back the size of the of the structure on the school property uh, the question would be is where would that money come from in order to do that whether that could be incorporated with what judy is doing because well, I it seems more logical with what 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 Judy's doing since it's 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 well away from from the uh, sidewalk. Yeah, we would we would probably have to negotiate that with Deep and see if that would be something that they would consider. Um, you know, related to the the purpose of the proposal. So right, I, it, I it think doesn't sound like a definite can... answer on that. It doesn't sound like you've got all that much money to work with from what you said. Judy. I, I don't recall offhand. Enough. So Judy, I, I pulled up the uh, work plan that you submitted to uh, Oh, good, Dave, thank you. And I think you're talking about um, either the Vegetated Swell at Thompson Public School Complex or the bioretention at that's the Thompson. The, the Vegetated Swell, yeah. Okay, so that's $4,000. <laughs> Um, so I, I also think, however, like Judy said, we could uh, negotiate with Connecticut Deep on shifting a little bit of money around if it's appropriate and if we can fit it into the budget. Yeah, we, you know, we did have, um, there were a number of different pieces to that proposal and some of that was uh, some low impact development practices at the town hall. Um, and I know that the highway department did do some improvements at the town hall that may have eliminated one of those practices that we were proposing so it, yeah it is possible that we could we could find a way to move money around a little bit but yeah hey, judy tangentially to this um but also related on in, in that it's a, a bar grant project um it, you guys still have little pockets of of grant money for uh rain garden installation too right because the when the uh when the end of lane gets redone um you know that bump out is going to need some kind of uh, landscape attention. I know we've already talked about it, so I, I had thought about that, and I was actually thinking that 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 money that I had targeted towards town hall could possibly be shifted over there. But but so. only if the pavement comes up right. Otherwise, it's just a shallow mud pit. That I'm not sure I follow you. you mean? Well, the, the pavement under at the bottom of Blaine Road, where the where it's going to be uh, bumped out, and it's now going to be uh, grass or or plantings. That that pavement has to be dug out of there, or there's there's no drainage. It's just dug. oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, and then we'd have to look and see, you know, if it's if it's all fill or if it's it's good right. soil underneath. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, so is do you have any any other questions for our committee or any other? Um, I don't think so, Dan. Do you? Oh, I just want to say hi to Norma for one thing. I haven't seen you in so long. Good <laughs> <laughs> to see you. Good to I see you. I want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> um, I don't know everybody else, but I do know Norma. Um, so my my comment will be that I think the timeline, the latter timeline that you spoke of, Janet, would work better. Um, from the perspective of the district starting the project next year, because I don't really see that DEEP would be able to execute a contract with the district by the end of the summer. Um, so I, I think that timeline works better for the district if it works for the town of Thompson. Okay. Yeah, and I could initiate discussion with DOT and then we'll probably have to bring in um, Rich at least and, and Tira and whoever, you know, whoever else is appropriate. So, but I, I'd be happy to at least get that going. Yeah. Yeah, the more squeaky wheels to conduct to fix that problem, the better. Yeah, I think constant repetition that there are multiple elements to that need to be coordinated cannot hurt. Uh, you know, you say something to one person one time, and if you get lucky, they'll remember it at the appropriate time. So. <laughs> You got to say it to multiple people at multiple times. So Judy, will you keep us updated of your future meetings? Oh, Maybe. definitely. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Let me know if you want to take a walk up to the school. We can look at the inlet. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, if you do that, I'd like to uh, come take a look too. <laughs> Start plotting and planning. Right. That sounds good. Field trip. Yay. Okay. All right. Well, th thank you guys very much for bringing that to our attention and for thinking of that project. It sounds like a great one. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting us come and meet with you this morning. Yeah, thank sure. you all. Nice meeting you. All right. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs> okay, so we will move on to committee business. Um, the lots of Route 12 sidewalk project design. Um, so we actually, we've had a really busy, busy month since we last met. We had the public, um, a, the public meeting, the presentation to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and Tira and I had a Zoom meeting with the architects and uh, the landscape architects and engineer. And that, the purpose of that was to discuss um, all the committee's comments on the 90% complete plan set um you know we it's similar to what's in the in the meeting minutes and i sent you guys all out a draft of it um it you know basically it was all of our comments so when we spoke to the landscape architects about the landscaping um they did agree to extend that three foot sidewalk now this is um at the Ross and Avenue intersection. They're gonna move the handicapped signs. They evaluated the plantings and reported that they are you know, very hardy, don't need pruning, can withstand salt and were, are, are low and shouldn't interfere with the sight line. Um, Tiara, do you have any additional comments from that Zoom meeting? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that, you know, they were responsive to our, to our questions and comments. Um, the, uh, just yesterday, um, we got the uh, response back from CONDOT about the, the environmental review requirements. So I think that's the, the next piece that we have to get working on. Yeah, yeah, we can go over that. Um... Oh, the other, the yeah. only other, I'm sorry, because I was just distracted a second. Um, the, the lighting came up and <laughs> although we did go back and forth about the lighting a couple of times, Yuyang reminded us that lighting design is not a part of their contract. So I. Yeah, yeah, well, I, that's going to be a, on number four. So I guess okay. yeah. we'll talk about that in more detail. So we addressed landscaping under traffic. We had given them comments about the pavement markings Bernie submitted and as well as uh, 
flashing speed limit signs, uh, their responses were that the pavement markings that were shown up in Massachusetts aren't a CONDOT standard. And so they, they don't do that in Connecticut. But Yu Yang did submit a request to District 2 to ask if those flashing speed limit signs would be appropriate to install um, within our project limit. So kind of got one out of two. <laughs> now, so number- Yeah, the expensive one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just so, I, does anybody have anything else to add before we get into the bus shelter about the traffic or the landscaping? So the so the but the bus shelter maybe Bernie maybe you can fill us in on part of that what, yeah what didn't happen <coughs> Eddie Eddie really had uh, no interest um, he's in in his defense I'll say he's got a major uh, major uh, project going right now I think it's for the government. Um, that's going to keep him going six months under pressure to get it completed. Um, so he passed it off to his son, who has his own glass business in Danielson, and uh, he ne he never I never heard a word from him. So um, unfortunately, local is out, and we just need to do something from the uh, probably better in the long run, simpler from the uh, from a manufacturer, national okay. manufacturer. Yeah, and I did get uh, I did get um, quotes from one of the companies that was sort of the easier one to get to. So it was uh, around eighty five hundred. Can 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 you? I don't know if um, right before this meeting at about ten o'clock, because we do have a lot of graphics we could discuss at this meeting. I wish we were in person, so I tried to pick out different pieces from different PDFs that Yu Yang and people have sent. Um, because once the, we found out that it wasn't going to be a locally manufactured shelter, like TRS, we kind of went back to um, the drawing board. And I mean, that particular there was some, was a shelter that, that I had looked at that I know comes prefab and would be easy to specify and has CAD drawing, so it's something that could be incorporated into the contract. And that's the, the price list that Tira got from them. And you can see the 10 foot by five foot one historical roof. He said it's like 8,500. Yeah, it was one of these two. Yeah. Yeah, this one. So I don't, I don't know if the committee is acceptable, if, if that's, if this, it also includes the bench, so basically, it includes the bench and the whole shelter. I, I think it looks nice. I, it's the one I would have, uh, you know, been drawn to in, in that in that picture. And the one that's shown there actually looks like it's actually a the smoking shelter because the glass is in the front. When they make the bus shelter, if you go to that next, the below sheet you were at, they they leave the front open, and then there's a bet pre you know, pre-installed bench on one side and then there's room for a uh, wheelchair on the other side. So is there a reason I, not to have one side enclosed? I think it has I mean, three sides enclosed, but the front is open and on the- Right, no, is there a reason to leave, leave the front open? No, you could, we could have it ordered as a, as a quote, smoking shelter. That's just the way this company does it. Defines it defines it exactly yeah I, I i like the idea of that one half of the front enclosed for you know you know stormy cold windy okay a warmer okay yeah would probably be looking at their pictures it would probably be the front would go in front of the bench and the part where the wheelchair goes i correct. think would be open correct what, what other people think I like it open myself, but well, I'm, I'm not dead set on the, that will also add to the cost. Just keep that in mind. Well, 
given my many years where buses were a major part of my transportation, uh, on those on those days, that little bit of extra cover is certainly helpful. And when we don't have a high volume stop, but you know the people yeah. who, who would need it, I, I think would probably appreciate the extra shelter. Yeah, I I I don't. I can't imagine it's going to break the budget. So, it, I, I mean, I think it, I think it probably is a good idea to have the, the, the front in front of the bench. Well, I think I have the, the uh, quotes for smoking shelters versus, uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Is that what this is? No, that's not what this one is. Never mind. <coughs> Never mind. What I have is not different. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we can can get it just I mean just yeah 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 specify out the model that has the the wall in front of the bench and it leaves the three foot clear for um the wheelchair person to come straight in and straight out three foot or five foot three there's their floor plan is three foot because it, it could be a, it could be a little wide I mean it, I, I only ask because three foot seems like minimum for, for a wheelchair maneuvering outdoor with snow and, you know, if, if, if it comes to that. Well, I mean, I guess we can, I guess we can ask them whatever their standard is. We uh, probably yeah, I just kind of assumed there would be a center post and one side of the post would be covered, the other side of the post would be open. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to look into that. That probably varies for each side. And I'm sure they have that information online because they do have a really good website, so. And can we just pick this or does this have to be sent to, to multiple companies for, for, for quoting to meet, you know, to meet, to meet uh, requirements? Uh, the members of the select board can confirm, but I'm pretty sure 10,000 is the level at which you have to go out to bid. Okay. Well, in, in, on this project, what we're hoping to do is have it be part of the sidewalk project. So it's not going to be standalone because this price is only for the structure. It doesn't include installation. It doesn't include the concrete pad. Right. Um, so it, if the committee votes to forward this structure on to Freeman, then I believe they will incorporate it in, into their project. Probably they'll specify this company, this model, and they'll put or equal. Yeah. So if there is to be any kind of substitution, it would have to meet, you know, all the same diameters of members and pipes and stuff like that. So there's a high likelihood that we would get this exact one that was specified. Excellent. And does that come with any type of solar lighting or anything? Uh, because that is a solid roof. There is an option. I That was one of the prices they sent Tierra. And I think it was between like five and eight hundred dollars, depending on if you wanted a low level solar or a higher level solar light. Are we, are we, are we going to have street lights around this? We we may have. <laughs> we I, have I know because I, I saw that. We have to we'll have to talk about that next if we can afford that. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm going to stop the share so I can see if I can find the piece with the solar light for the shelter. Hope I can because if we are going to have a street light there, it's easy enough just to 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 jump a wire underground over into the shelter. Well. The street, then, light was proposed, the street light was proposed to be solar, so there wouldn't be oh. wire. <laughs> okay. So, I, but I think, I think we could ask free if the committee wants to for five or eight hundred dollars. I think it's a, appropriate to tell them to. It's an it's considered an accessory. So we, if that's the decision of the committee then I think that's what we just, we tell Freeman that we want the light. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking at maintenance, you'd be replacing strictly the batteries periodically, you know, running up a, a wire underground from the town hall over, you know, to pay for oh. that. You're talking quite a bit of expense just to run that. 
Yes, love. Bullshit. And if you look, so so that's just your, that's the low light. I think at the below what I, at least what I can see on my screen, they have more money for a bigger, brighter light. But I don't, I wouldn't, personally, I don't think we would need the brighter light. I, I think just a little bit of low light would be, because you, if it's on, you're going to see it driving down Route 12 and that can be a distraction too. So I guess we should maybe see if that, if the shelter is okay and whether the light should go. It is. So I guess that's the decisions. If people agree with this shelter, then not this shelter, this is just the light, but the, the other shelter, whatever that model was and whether there should be a light or not. Any more, any more discussions or should we just go to most some motions or? I'll make a motion to, uh, to, to go with the, uh, the smoking bus shelter um, with, with a uh, solar light. Second. So that Norma. was a, Norma, Norma seconded that? Yeah. Um, is there any further discussion from anybody? Steve? Why, why did you prefer the open both sides before we finalize this? Steve? Just simplicity. I just thought oh, okay. it was uh, not a high use thing. And it was just simplicity, that's all. Anybody else have any comments? Any comments on the, the, the lights, whether that should be, Bernie's motion includes the light. Does any, is there any more comment? The solar light, is there any more comments on that or? Okay, then I guess hearing no more comments, I guess we should have a vote. So uh, all in favor of this shelter with a solar light, and a partial front glass, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, then I will forward the appropriate technical information to Freeman and tell him incorporate that into the construction drawings. So the, so the other really interesting thing that came up, now we'll go to the, to the lights, the exterior lights. Um, when we had the public meetings, we, everybody was um, really supportive of this project. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission members, or, you know, the, the few people who who's, were participating in the public meeting, but they mentioned lights as being something that would be a great addition to this project. Um, it's not within our budget to do like like decorative lights for 7,400 feet. That would be, uh, you know, extremely unaffordable and never planned for. So one of the Planning and Zoning Commission members sent us some literature on solar lights. And when uh, Tira and I had the landscape architect and Yu Yang on the phone. We discussed this with them. And so they, what they came back, th this is the same company, the solar company that Brian Santos recommended. And what they suggested, if you look at the fourth light from the left, if you can this go, one? yeah, perfect here. If you guys look at the fourth light from the left, that one that she has the cursor on, it is, a, they said it, it's appropriate because of the dark top to meet like, you know, dark skies um, type regulations because you're not releasing just a lot of light straight up. Um, so they suggested something like that. And then if you can go down to the product specs tier, if you wouldn't mind. See, so you can see what they highlighted. They, they, they suggested the Bilboa 
head, and then there's two different bases, a taller and a shorter one. Um, Brian Santos said that he thought those, where did I write those down? That they would be about $8,000 installed and that um, Yu Yang and the landscape architect Heidi agreed that that was an appropriate ballpark amount. So if you can keep scrolling up the page a little bit more, Tira, if you wouldn't mind. So, so what they did was they added two decorative solar lights to the Rawson intersection and two near the town hall intersection. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I know they're on there somewhere. Um, pedestrian, uh, pedestrian light, light, if you look, yeah, pedestrian light. So there's one each side of the intersection. Um, so one right near the restaurant and white, one right near the handicapped parking. And yes, so, and this, actually this is a good example. This plan shows that they incorporated our comments from last month into the plan. You can see that that three foot concrete sidewalk does extend behind all the spaces. So it leads everybody who's parked there to the crosswalk. But, and then, and then they also showed two lights at the, um, if you can go, go to the bus shelter, the next sheet, please. So what they did was they showed one light directly next to the bus shelter on the left-hand side. And then they showed another light to the right of the driveway. Yes, yeah, so like in there. So just to kind of dress up the area as part of the landscaping element. Um, so that's kind of the good news. And I think, so that, so if we got four of those, that would be $32,000 because if they're $8,000 each. Um, but after they went to all that work, then Freeman sent us a note saying that designing these was outside the scope of his contract. And he says, I'd, I would like to bring it to your attention. Lighting design is not in our contract. There's a substantial amount of work involved to incorporate the light in the project, even if it's just a few lights at certain locations. We need to confirm the selected light meets code, coordinate with the manufacturer for the foundation design, incorporate specs in the bid documents, address comments, et cetera. Um, can we talk about an additional service agreement so we can be compensated and the work can be covered? Um, so. <laughs> My reaction. <laughs> is that's an awful lot of money for four light bulbs. And even more now to have Freeman officially design them. Um, I, have to, I have to wonder if the town couldn't just pull the, this off on its own. And if there isn't any way to, to get a, to take, take this off the, 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 the power poles whether it be with a meter or a default charge, monthly charge, like with the overhead street lights on the road, um, and, and do this for a fraction of the money. Yeah, that, that, that could be investigated. Does uh, anybody else have any comments? I agree with Bernie 100%, yes. So, so basically the comment is that the decorative lights are too expensive, so they should be removed from um, the plans and some, somebody can look at some other way to light up the area. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? We can, we can have a discussion with Rich and, and uh, see what he thinks. Uh, I'll point out that uh, you get some light benefit now if we go with the solar lights that go with the bus shelter. Uh, I will also point out that it does appear we are likely to move forward with the LED sign for uh, Town Hall. So there will be 
some increase of light there, although the, it will probably be dimmer in the evening um, for a lot of reasons, but. Uh, You're up. Yes. I was thinking, but didn't, I guess, bother to pipe up that there's a decent uh, light off the um, grounds of the town hall that lights that parking lot. I don't know how far, I mean, it's pretty, you know, you come out of here at, at night and that lights on, it, it does um, offer a lot of light. Yeah, it's true. That area is not plunged in darkness at night. Is there a street light? Is there a phone pole close by with a street light on it? <clears throat> yeah, there's one back here. We have our own light right, right, right on the property, yeah. But, but in terms of uh, um, the power company poles, is, is there a street light? There, there is a couple, you know, along that stretch. After the uh, post office towards Ross and Ave, they get more sparse. It, since we're redoing the sidewalks, I think it would be, because you're looking at lighting it all the way up to Ross and Ave, if you're going to do a lot of pedestrian traffic, that maybe we could coordinate with Eversource and put in some of those LED lights, uh, every two poles, every other pole. That would be the most cost effective you know, to light it all the way up to Ross and Ave. I mean, what, what, there to 200. Yeah. When, when I put the uh, light in at the Mechanicsville Schoolhouse, um, and I was paying the month, uh, paying the monthly, and still am now paying the monthly fee on that, which, which isn't much money. Um, since I was paying it, um, I had the option of hanging that light fixture any direction I wanted. So instead of hanging it over the street, it hung over the uh, front yard of the schoolhouse. Um, and we could, we could do something similar here, um, it, it, depending on the, uh, of course, on the pole locations. I've never really looked, so I don't know. When you're talking the bus shelter, the, uh, the light poles there are between, between the railroad and Route 12. On the other uh, side of the street? Correct. OK. Here. I guess my, my thought would be that I think that what Ken proposed is a great solu solution, but I'm not sure that would come out of our grant money. That would no. probably be something the town would just look into doing in the future as, as the sidewalks get repaired and, and foot traffic increases. What we could do is, uh, for, is we could have Freeman, since they already put this on their plans, just have them put, label them future pedestrian light. And then if our bids come in under budget, then we could potentially add this in as a change order versus not use all, all of our construction money and have to give some back to the state. I would just be, I, I, that, that's all great, Janet. I would just be looking for any way reasonable to get electricity out there so they didn't have to go solar. So well, any, any adding of street lights uh, throughout the town is approved by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Just to let you know, because at the corner of Ross and Ave, we did not have a street light there and I think three years ago we voted to put it in just for visibility at that uh, intersection. It was it was needed. Okay. Does so you know if it's if it's not too disruptive of the work that we are all, you know, working to facilitate right now. I mean, if retrofitting lights to it in the future is feasible without you know ruining anything we're doing, uh, I feel pretty confident that. Um, street light improvements in pedestrian areas are probably highly grantable. Oh. Okay, so. I mean, we didn't think to include A lot of good this. ideas. So I guess we have to have some resolution that we're going to accept that not only as a committee, but uh, give direction to Freeman on what they should do. I like your idea, Janet, of remarking them as future lights. As an option. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Would you repeat okay. that? 
So, so, and I, and I, so we can, and I, we can explain it to them or Tira can explain to them, you know, our budget, we've used up our bar grant money. We don't have any extra money to right now to pay them to design it. So label it as future. And if the, we have the money at the construction standpoint, you know, we can reevaluate it and then maybe add it into the contract then. Sounds like a plan. And, and we can still pursue as a, as a town, the LED lights that Ken was talking about going the whole way down the street just for um, you know, general safety and lighting. Okay, is, there, is that, so does that sound acceptable to everybody? I'm not sure that's something we have to make a motion on or should we, or is that? Well, that's, up, that's up to you as chair, Janet. <laughs> Okay, fine then. Let's have let, let, let's have a motion to to tell Yu Yang to put them as future pedestrian lights, and we'll reevaluate it when the construction dollars come in. I make a motion to have it done as future uh, possible lighting, and uh, we'll look at it uh, again when we see how the grant money holds up. Second. Okay, so Bernie made the motion. Norma seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? All right, so now we're up to number five, other design elements. Um, some, does anybody, ha anybody have any? I just put that on to keep the agenda a little bit open since this is a special meeting and we can't add items to the agenda, so. I'm I'll, I'll no. ask the question. What's happening with existing trees that are tearing up the current sidewalk? Are those coming down? I mean, we would have to look at the plans to see specifically if, if um, Freeman denoted to remove a certain tree that was tearing up a sidewalk. Um, I can't think of any that are between Blaine and Town Hall that are where it's where it's a tree that's causing the problem. I, I think there's one, which is what what I think when I was running or, or that way or something somewhere over the last few months, I think I went, oh, when I saw a tree. And I'd have maybe, to go look to be more specific. Maybe in front of the cemetery. Well, no, it was closer to Blaine Road, whatever made me. It was between it was between Blaine Road and the school, the uh, Thatcher Road. Wh whatever I saw was somewhere in that stretch, I think. But you walk that all the time, way more than I do. So if yeah, there is and something I, there. I didn't walk today because it was raining this morning, but it, uh, I am walking again now. So I will make a point of um, looking okay. uh, the next time I walk, which is which will be next week. I, I mean, I recall a tree between Blaine Road and 200. If my hey, memory that's what right. I'm thinking of, Ken. That's possible. Yeah, yeah, there's one. There's one tree there that I think is still there. Yeah, so closer to the intersection. Of 200, yes. Yeah. If, if you guys identify a tree that you think is a problem, we can bring it to the to Freeman's attention and have them put a note on the plan that. And well, first we would have to make sure it was in the DOT right away because if it's on somebody's private property, that's another story. But uh, that tree is actually right in between uh, the sidewalk and the highway. Right. Okay. And we, yeah, we can look. We can look at the plans and see if I'm sure they located that tree then and we and we can see if the plans have a note that says it should be removed. Do you guys all think it should be removed? It's breaking up the sidewalk. It's not giving good shade. It's past its lifetime. Well, that yeah. was my reaction. That particular tree has been hacked up over the years just to keep for uh, your utilities going through because it's right underneath the power. Okay, well, Tier, like you said, maybe you can take another look at it, and then if it seems like people are in agreement that it should be removed, we'll just make sure it's in the plans. Well, if it's at the other, if it's near the inter, closer to the two hundred intersection, I don't usually go that way, but obviously I drive by there every single day, so I'll. I'll... I, th I think all you have to do is look right when you come out of Blaine Road. Okay. 
Okay, great, good, good point. I'm looking at, at, at Google Earth here, and the only tree I see is about, on that side, is about halfway between Blaine Road and Route 12. Mm. So it, uh, um, here it's one, two, three, four houses down is the four. only one that's showing up here from the uh, satellite. Four houses south. Four houses south, to the right, okay. as, you, as you intersect uh, Route 12. Okay, I'll take a look. Okay. Any any other um, design elements that people want want to discuss before we move into like the construction contract topics? Okay, so I guess if we, we want to talk about construction, um, right right now we're just initiating some much better coordination between Tierra Rich. Um, and Rich has been really helpful with that, and DOT regarding them putting off their mill and repave project for Route 12, because, um, you know, that's really important that the sidewalks be installed before the road is paved, and um, so, we're, so we're all working on that, and it seems like it might, finally, we're getting through, I think, to DOT, but right now, DOT is the one, the only thing remaining that's keeping the project from going out to bid is getting the comments back from, from district two, uh, because they typically make very specific comments, you know, exactly like change this note at this station and we, and the consultant has not received those comments yet. When those comments are taken, are received and taken care of, then it should be the plan will be a hundred percent done and we should be able to put it out to bid. So well, we got, we got something back yesterday. Hold on. What, what we got back yesterday wasn't the district two encroachment permit comments. We got okay. um, the environmental the screening results. Okay. Yes. I, I just found it. I just found it. Well, so what is district two? Dis it's like in Norwich. It's like the maintenance, maintenance district of Condot. When they review it, they have multiple engineers. They have a traffic engineer, a right-of-way engineer, a construction engineer, a drainage engineer, a highway engineer. They have a ton of people redo, review the plans. And this is a huge 70 sheet set of plans. So um, it take, they're slow. It takes a long time for them to review it. And, and we're physically located in district two, I take it. So that's our yes. head office? Yes. It's okay. out of Norwich. Yep. Yeah, this district two is right next to the Norwich DMV. So, so that's where our plans are waiting for review, but we did just yesterday, hot off the presses, get another important state review document. Um, it was, what's it called here? The environmental review team The report? environmental review, uh, environmental screening results. So I've got the attachment and then some additional instructions. And one of those instructions were, uh, was that it had to be sent to SHPO because it's in the, the historic district. So I've already been in touch with Catherine Labadia, um, whom I just happened to have a, another recent conversation with because of that grant I'm uh, submitting for the incubator project. Because uh, the 65 main building also required environmental review because of the the district and the age, um, so uh, so she says she'll work on it as quickly as she can. What that means, I don't know. So so the good the good that report when it came out, Tier is correct. We do have to. It did tell us that we need one more action item, and Freeman is going to help take care of that. And Tier is working with Yu Yang on that. But the good news is like virtually every category that they reviewed it in, like, you know, endangered species, air pollution, light pollution, like we're cleared of that. So basically we have a clean slate of environmental issues um, out of their 23 page report, except for submitting it to, to SHPO. Yeah. So that was an important document that just, just came in yesterday. Um, the, oh, the other thing that we're kind of working on, we, we talked about contract administration, what the scope of that should be. Um, 
and we're trying to figure that out because Yu Yang and Freeman thought that full-time construction inspection would be required, which would exceed $50,000. So we would have to put out an RFP for consultants. But I'm, we checked with NECOG and their recollection is the same as mine that neither Killingly or Putnam had full-time construction inspection on their lots of projects. They just had part-time. And so NECOG is in the process of checking with the state to, to, to double check. And, and so we'll, we'll have to work that out. So we're either going to potentially be able to use Freeman on a part-time basis. I think Rich thought if they came up like once or twice a week, or we're gonna to have to put out an RFP for full-time construction inspection, which is a three month construction project. So process, so having an inspector eight hours a day, five days a week for three months will be very expensive. The grant covers it, but if we don't need that money for inspection, that's when we could maybe be using it for lights or landscaping at Blaine Road or something else. So, so that's kind of in flux. We're waiting to hear back, right? Right, Tira from from NECOG and Jim? Uh, yes, although NECOG is never quick to respond. So maybe I'll look for that uh, for that old thread and give him a poke. Okay. And and on the same end, maybe I'll because because Yu Yang said he was gonna go look into the grant requirements and see he because he could he could have just been thinking of another DOT pro program that does require full-time inspection. They have so many programs and they all have different requirements. Okay, I found the response from Jim from the 5th of March. I forward your question, questions to Vitali, so he's the one of the conduct contacts. I believe that local standards and specifications can be used for inspection if they do not exist then form 1817. Uh, there are minimum testing requirements in Appendix H. Killingly used municipal staff, and I do not think it was full-time inspection. The guidelines reference that it should be adequate for the size of the project and in cooperation with the design engineer. I do not think Put Putnam is looking for inspection services to come out of the lot SIP funds, but if this is what you are proposing, I think you need three quotes if the cost is under 50,000 per. We have not had anyone do this, so I'm not sure exactly of the process. I will let you know when I hear back from Condot. And that right. was the so, last. Right, so that's what I guess we need to follow up and see if Jim heard back from Condot. If you do that, I guess I'll, I'll coordinate with Yu Yang and ask him if he looked more into it on his end. So what I'll do is I will open a response to this thread, copy you, Janet, and copy in Vitali and say, was there Oops. any further discussion of these requirements? Because, because if we do have to engage a new consultant, I mean, even that's like a couple month process, sending out an RFP, interviewing, different things. So, so, you know, we're not there yet, but I think it's good that we're thinking about it and trying to stay on top of it. Anybody have any other questions and or comments on the construction schedule, construction, anything? Okay, then I guess we should talk about John Gumpert and the River Mill site plan submission status. I don't know if anybody, I, I think, Amy is not on this meeting today, correct? I don't she know was on briefly, but she's dropped off. Um, okay. I have not heard anything relevant from uh, Gumpert or Pam Elkow mm -hmm. since November. I've communicated with them about a couple of other things, but it, it, not relevant to this conversation. Have you heard anything at the Board of Selectmen meetings or anything, Ken? No, no new information has come out at all. Okay. 
Well, maybe we, our next meeting is only a couple weeks away since we had this extra one. So I'll try to reach out to Amy and see if she can maybe reach out to John and see when he, what his schedule is, just catch up with him. So I guess number C, any other committee business having to do with the bar grant or anything? Um, well, tangential, I guess. Uh, um, the, uh, I, I think you guys know we received a, a grant from uh, Department of Housing to develop an affordable housing plan. Um, Guskowski and Mike D'Amato um, broke away from CMA, CHA and formed their own planning group. And, and they are the firm that is hired as the consultant. So we're gonna start work on that. Uh, I would really like a member or two from MISRAC to be a part of the working group on that. Um, you know, it's probably gonna be one extra meeting a month for a little while. Uh, probably, well, it, it, we got a contract, <coughs> we got a grant extension to go through the end of the year because because um, that their firm has so many of these projects stacked up, but I expect that we'll be done with it by the end of August. Um, you know, a couple of, couple of public presentations, some discussion groups, working up a draft plan. Um, but since the, you know, the issues that affordable housing touches are also issues that are relevant to you know this kind of district revitalization i think it would be uh, very helpful to have some of you guys on that that would be an invitation <laughs> all right don't all volunteer at once now <laughs> this If we were if we were back in the days when CME was doing all our environmental uh, site assessments, I would I would volunteer. But but this this the bar grant sidewalk project takes a lot of my time, so I I feel like uh, understandable. I'm a little stretched on it. I mean, jo Joanne, from your real estate perspective, and and Steve, from your architectural perspective, I think would be excellent choices. Uh, well, you'd all be excellent choices, but my architectural commitments are keep. I thought you were retired, too brother. Busy, actually, so I, I don't have the time. Okay. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have the spare time. Okay. Well, I can just consider it, Tara. Right at okay. the moment, I need a little more information. You can send me an email or, or whatever. We don't have to take up time right now to, to discuss it, but I'll, I'll consider it. That's fine, and I, I should be sending something out next week, probably. Great. Okay. All right. Hey, does. Um, and then I guess we can move on to number six, member comments. I just want to know if that's a giant spider behind you on the, on the wall, Janet, or a coat hook. Next to your closet door. <laughs> Next to my closet door? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 I can't, I, I couldn't hear the exact question because of your, there's kind of an, a reverb on your- No, mind. it was a question, is that a giant spider or a coat hook next to the closet? Door? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cast iron frog. Oh. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little tree frog climbing my wall. <laughs> I thought it was a mezuzah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong door, wrong door. Tonight. Wrong door, wrong door. <laughs> okay, well, this I know with the last couple meet, I know it's pretty, we're at a pretty intense point in this uh, bar grant sidewalk thing. So I appreciate everybody taking the time for these long meetings and special meetings. Um, thanks. <laughs> um, is, where do we stand on everybody with vaccinations? I think as soon as we're all vaccinated, which Mary and I are now fully, as of a couple of days ago, uh, we can get, start having meetings together. Sounds uh, good to me. 
I'll be fully vaccinated as of next Tuesday. I'm fully vaccinated. Yeah, I have oh, I have one I'm, one down. I am too. Me too. Good. But we're close. I've got yeah. them all. Maybe by May we can all get together. Yeah. That'd be well, nice. Well, Amy did send out an interesting um, thing about that if that public meetings have to be held in public after some date in April unless they pass some legislation allowing people to continue on zoom anyhow so I oh. think that I think that the um, the momentum is that that legislation to enable remote and or hybrid <coughs> meetings uh, has a high chance of passing okay. uh, but until it passes that's correct the requirement would be uh, okay. after April 20th it would yeah, have to so, go back to live so Maybe that's something we'll discuss at our next couple at our next two meetings is uh, how we want to handle the future meetings because like a meeting like this to, when there's so many graphics and handouts and plans to review I think it would be way better in person but I also can see that it's good to have sometimes our meetings don't have that graphic aspect and it might be more convenient for people to be at home so we can talk about that. But eventually, it sounds like this will go away as an option. From what it, you're saying, Tira. Uh, what I think is that it might temporarily go away until that legislation gets passed. No, no, but I mean, oh, is that legislation permanent or is that just extending the date? No, I think, uh, and, and I won't say that I read it closely, but what I did read was that, uh, you know, it's being considered. Uh, and you know it's not as relevant for this committee because um, it meets during the regular workday and and people are mostly self-directed in their schedules but for evening meetings um, the zoom format actually is much more democratizing it enables people to dial in not have to drive in yeah yeah you know the uh -huh. whole the whole nine yards right and I think that that is something that um, many people have, come to realize and therefore there is quite a bit of momentum to enable some form of hybrid meeting or uh, general use of remote platforms going forward but oh, cool. um, but but that remains to be seen thank you okay any any other member comments this is normal I just have a question for Bernie. Bernie, were you able to pick up the trash on Plain Road? <laughs> <laughs> it is a year-round project for us, Norma. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, there, there, is, uh, there is going to be an organized day to clean up Riverside Park on Saturday the 10th, uh, starting right. at the, end of the morning, uh, and that is ahead of the, uh, the, the big Maker Fair opening day. Um, so as many folks as want to join in on that, that uh, that's going to be a big project. Okay. All right. Well, again, thank thank you, everybody. Um, I guess we can adjourn this meeting at twelve nineteen. See you in a few weeks. In a few weeks. Bye bye. Have a good weekend, everyone. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.